worship and encouragement. We're very glad you're here. If you're a first time visitor, we are especially glad that you're here with us this morning. We do have a welcome bag for you at the welcome desk. So please, before you leave the service, go over there, pick up this welcome gift. Uh, this is our uh, way of saying we are glad that you're sharing this morning with us. And you will have a little gift inside and also some information about what God is doing in this church and how you can be a part of that. Did you like having an extra hour of sleep and rest? Yeah, it was good, right? So there is no excuse for sleeping during the service this morning, right? If you, if you see someone sleep, next to you sleeping, just kick him and say, today is no excuse Sunday. No excuse Sunday. You had extra hour of rest. So we should be attentive during the service. Let's just highlight a few announcements for us. Tonight we will continue our sermon series, Evangelism for Everyone, on Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 to 6. We're going to focus tonight at verses 3 and 4 and talk about a prayer strategy for personal evangelism. Applications for a Christian child care director positions are due this coming Monday by 5 p.m. This coming Monday by 5 p.m. You can turn the applications to Ashley. Edgerton, Ashley, can you just wave your hand for a second? Ashley is there or Julie Grubb? Julie, Julie is there also on the back or to church office. So applications for child care director position are due uh, by Monday 5 p.m. Uh, World Day of Prayer is this coming Monday, Monday at 7 o'clock at First Baptist Church in Clayton, and group from our church will leave here at 6 o'clock. So if you would like to come, please contact Miss Mildred. We will use our, our uh, van and go here from church at 6 o'clock. Anyone who is interested for World Day of Prayer, that will be this coming Monday at 7 p.m. at First Baptist Church of Clayton. World Crafts Gift arrived. And there are the welcome desk under, so after the service, all of you who order and who are part of that, please, you can pick them up. Our youth is going to fall retreat to Virginia this coming Friday, so let's just keep them in prayer. They will be there over the weekends. Please keep youth and their leaders as they are going to youth retreat this coming weekend. Then uh, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas is almost here, and there will be certain uh, events in the community that can lead us to the joys of the season. One of these is community Thanksgiving service that will be on Sunday, November 19 this year. That will be at St. Mary's Church of God. So everyone is invited to come there and participate together with other uh, churches in the area in this type of uh, uh, service and praise to the Lord. And then at Kenley uh, Christmas Festival, this, this will be on December 2nd, Saturday, December 2nd, there will be a living nativity set up and uh, uh, George has costumes that will be wear over your clothes. So if anyone would like to volunteer to sign to be uh, uh, for, for an hour or two to play uh, uh, Mary or Joseph or Angel or Shepherd, you can do that. So please contact Pastor George if you would like to participate. So that's Kenley Christmas Festival, Saturday, December 7th. Are there any other announcements that we need to make this morning? If not, let's come to the Lord and just ask him to prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, our Father in heaven, we, we are amazed again that we can be here. And it's such a privilege for us to call you our Father. And oh, what a sacrifice it took to make it possible, Father. So help us that we may never, ever take this honor lightly but always be thankful and always be amazed. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you died for us. Thank you that you paid for our sins once and for all, and we thank you that you gave your life willingly, and that part of the joy that was set before you was in calling us to come to you for a new life. Thank you for the abundant life that we have in you. Thank you that we can have fellowship with you unhindered by the guilt of sin, and blessed by the peace of your forgiveness. This morning, Lord, we do come and we surrender our, our wills to you in worship and in praise. And we pray again that today we'll be able to gaze at your beauty and experience your grace. And as a result, may our lives be characterized by humble obedience, by loving service, and by the fruit of the Spirit. For your glory and for our joy and for the blessing of others, we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Please stand and let's worship the Lord with spiritual songs. Hallelujah, his love is amazing. to praise our Lord and Savior. His strength is sufficient for us. So as we get ready to sing Thrive, uh, as the song we've done a couple times, but I would just pray that uh, as we go through these transitions, man, we would just continue to thrive and that the Lord would bless us um, as a church just to be able to go out and touch uh, Kenley. So let's continue to have this song as a praise song, also as a prayer song. To
greatest thing is we just put our faith and trust in him. He is mighty to save. He is more than anything we could ever do on our own. needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. And we're going to declare the same thing today right now as we're going to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings and also there will be two uh, baskets that we're going to pass on. The other one are care cards. When we encourage everyone to take one write down all your praises something we can praise the Lord for. Write down if you have any prayer requests and then we're going to bring this to the Lord on Tuesday together as a church pray for it looking our putting our eyes on Jesus Christ who is the one who fulfills all our needs amen amen let's worship him we are your house today dear Lord I am 
thankful that you did conquer the grave and we have no father in heaven. I also pray that each person here today would, would hear your word, a song said, a, a comment from a fellow believer here in Father, that they can feel the power to move their mountain in, in their life. In the Father, and I pray that you would empower Mr. Powell today and let him speak your word straight to our hearts in the Father. Please bless these tithes and these offerings and the, and the giver as well. Amen, the Father. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. guiding us in this time of praise with spiritual songs. The children are now dismissed to their Sunday school classes. You can go here on the left side and your teachers will take you to our classes. Praise the Lord for our teachers and for our children. Amen. Today we have a guest speaker and I would like to invite uh, our elder Ricky to come here and introduce our guest speaker to us. crowd today, so that's good for Zeke. Um, I want to introduce our, our guest speaker today, It'll be Zeke Powell. Zeke is a homegrown boy. He's from here in Kenley, graduated from North Johnston. In fact, I'm 
pretty sure went all his school life in Johnston County Schools here up through the ranks. Um, I know he's got one mentor, um, Dane Williford, that's a teacher out at school um, out at North Johnston. Thought it'd be a nice change of pace to show that we do still have some young people that are out there and they're, they're preaching the word, they're preaching the gospel. They're preaching it out of the Bible. They're not doing the feel-good religion. They're not um, doing it for entertainment. They're doing it for the love for Christ. <coughs> Zeke is a prime example like that. His mother and father are sitting on, on the front row. I've watched Zeke grow up. Um, many of you probably seen Zeke grow up. Um, he's a testament to a fine father and mother that have kept him in church. Um, for all you young parents that are out here, just saw a lot of kids go to go to children's church. Um, hey, man, I've told y'all before. I've got one in heaven, number eleven, Reese. And whether or not your kid gets to heaven. Doesn't matter whether you like it or not, a lot of it's going to be based on what you teach him today and what you live in front of him. You can um, you can talk it all you want, okay? But if you don't walk it every day in front of that child, um, they're not going to see it. We've all messed up. We've all fallen short. Zeke is a good example of what can happen. Looking forward to hearing him preach. Um, Y'all please... Um, listen and think about what we can do. If Zeke, you're what, 20, 21? 21, 21 years old. He's going to get up here and he's going to preach. He's going to preach God's word. And um, God, if a 21-year-old can do that, what is wrong with an old man like me or an old man like you or even a young man like you? There are a lot of young ones out here that are very active in the church. But y'all, look, you're not alone. Um, God said he wouldn't leave us or forsake us, and he's not going to. Zeke, come on. And welcome Zeke Powell. Praise God, I brought, brought a loaf of bread with me this morning, <laughs> if anyone's hungry. This morning, we're going to be talking about a type of food. It's a whole lot different than this loaf of bread I brought with me this morning. Can I get a few uh a few people to come up here and help me out. A few people. Don't rush the stage at once, please. Just four people. That's all I need. Four people. Praise God. Just four people. Four people. I didn't bring no ham with the sandwich this morning. Praise God. We're good. Four people. I've just split this loaf of French bread five ways between us five people this morning. This morning, I can take this bread and I can eat it. This bread has a distinctive taste about it. This morning, my brother can take this bread, and he can smell it. And the bread has a specific smell about it. This morning, Brother Kyle can take this bread, and if he listens very closely, he can put it to his ear, and he can't hear the ocean, my brother. <laughs> but he can hear the sound of the bread breaking. This morning, if Sister Jennifer looks out 
hard enough at this bread, she can see it. And if you hold this bread tight enough, I promise you, brother, you can feel it. See, this bread is physical bread. This is what we eat. This is what we would call food. This bread is what we see, what we feel, what we hear, what we taste. This bread is what we have for nourishment of our bodies. And it can be physically sensed in this realm. Thank you, guys. The title of my morning, uh, message this morning is Invisible Food and Hungry Christians. We're going to look at John chapter 4, if you would turn with me there, starting in verse 27. Now, most of you, before you eat physical food at the dinner table, you normally would pray. So before we digest this spiritual food from the Word of God, let us pray a blessing over it. Dearly Father, we thank you for this day, O God. We thank you for this service, O Lord, uh, a gathering of your saints together. My Father, to worship you and your Son, Jesus Christ, to make you known, my Father. My Lord, I just ask that you would reveal things unrevealed this morning, my God, that you would help us see things unseen this morning, my Lord, that you would help us hear things unheard, my Lord, that you would reveal the Scriptures to us in Jesus' name, amen. John chapter 4, starting in verse 27, and I will be using the English Standard Version of the Scriptures this morning. Just then his disciples came back, and they marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you seek, or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that that you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Now before we get into the message, I want to share with you one other passage of Scripture from John chapter 6, if you would turn with me there. John chapter 6. Starting in verse 25. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? 
Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set a seal. Then they said to him, What what must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe in you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. I believe that everyone in this room can accept the idea that food is a basic primary need. To most of us, it's not only a primary factor of the matter of life, but it's something that we love and enjoy. In fact, I'm sure most of you probably have already thought about at least one time while I've been speaking about what you're having for lunch today. Probably already thought about it. I'm assuming that each of you have a favorite food. Some maybe steak, some pizza. Some ice cream, maybe pretzels, maybe donuts. You can't pass up a Krispy Kreme donut. You can't be a Christian and pass up a Krispy Kreme donut, amen. To each of us, food has a special place in our lives. In the same way, food had a very special place in Jesus' life. In fact, food had a very uh, special place, an extremely special place in the Jewish culture, the culture that Jesus came out of. You see, early on when God set apart the Jews, the nation of Israel, for his uh, destiny, for his redemption plan of mankind, when he set apart this people, He gave the Jews, the nation of Israel, a set of laws, 600 and some commandments that he gave the Jews. A whole slew of those commandments, a whole slew of those laws, guess what they were? They were food laws. Eat this, don't eat that. Eat this, make sure you definitely don't eat that. Now God did this because food is special to God. He uses food to separate people from evil things. The Jews ate certain foods because of their dietary laws. They ate certain foods at festivals and feasts. For example, during Passover, God commanded the Jews to eat bitter food. Strangest thing. They would eat bitter herbs. This was to remind them of their slavery in the land of Egypt. The table for the Jewish culture was a place of gathering. It was a place of learning. It was a place of teaching. It was a place of family unity. And the same is today. And guess what is at the center of the table? Food. A lot of God's word and a lot of 
the accounts and the stories that are in God's Word, if you look very closely, a lot of it is centered around food. Now in the passage of Scripture that we just looked at together, John chapter 4 and John chapter 6, Jesus had some food. But it seems as Jesus didn't have what man considered food. He didn't have physical food. It seemed that Jesus had a totally different type of food in these passages that we've just looked at. Jesus had invisible food. Now that beats all you've ever heard right there, don't it? How in the world... Can you have something that's unseen, that's unfelt, that you can't physically sense in this life? Invisible food is a spiritual substance that is continually mentioned throughout the scriptures. But it would seem as most Christians completely miss this idea that God is given over and over again throughout especially the Gospels. Today I want to explore an idea with you. And here it is. The idea that I want to explore with you is simply the fact that we have a lot of hungry Christians. A lot of hungry Christians. A lot of hungry Christians with stomachs that are full, but with hearts that are completely empty, lacking spiritual food. Before jumping back into the Word of God today, I want to explore with you a few points. Point number one, Jesus never had an identity crisis. Jesus knew that he was the Emmanuel, God accompanying us. He knew his mission on this earth. He knew the price that he would have to pay for the people of the world. He knew that he was the carpenter, the son of Joseph And Mary, but not only was he the carpenter, but that he was the savior of mankind. He stayed absolutely focused on his mission. Jesus was the most focused man in history. His focus was on the mission of the cross. That's Jesus' focus in this life, in his 30 odd years of living upon this planet. His focus was on the cross. His mission was prophesied throughout eternity. Starting in Genesis chapter 3, you see in the curse that God placed on the serpent, you see the redemption story already taking place through His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Point number two, Jesus' identity was directly interconnected with his purpose. Jesus' identity was the living son of God. Jesus' purpose was being the son of God. Jesus' identity and purpose were one and the same. His identity was directly tied into his purpose and his purpose was directly tied tied into his identity. My third point this morning. Each and every human being have an identity. When I was born in Johnson Memorial Hospital, September 1st, 1996, my parents gave me a name, Ezekiel Cole Powell. That name withholds, it encompasses my identity, who I am, what I have done in this life, my past, my present, and my future. 
that name identifies who I am. Just like that, God created each and every single one of us with certain dynamics, certain talents, certain abilities, certain strengths, and weaknesses. Each of us have our own God-given DNA. If we go and get our DNA checked, our DNA sequencing is going to be different for every single one of us in this room, unless you're an identical twin. I don't think we have any identical twins with us today. God has given you a very special thing, and that is your identity. God wants you to use that. Every single human being on this planet, all 7.5 billion some people, were formed by God with a special individual identity. My fourth point this morning, each and every human being has a purpose. God has formed each human being with a cross-centered purpose. Let me say that again. With a cross-centered purpose. Now you might say there's no way that God can do such a thing as give purpose to every single human life on this earth for the past 6,000 years. There's no way God could do such a thing as to give every single one of us purpose. Now to this I say such a thing would be impossible for man to do. But with God, no thing is impossible. God seamlessly networks each and every one of our lives in such a way that His purpose is continually being created on a daily basis for our lives. God's mission in your life is continually refreshed in a new dynamic every single day. A new set of objectives are found in the interactions that take place between you and other people every single day that you live, every single scene that we experience in this life. God has a purpose in it. So what does any of this thing, uh, any of this thing to do with identity and purpose, how does this tie in to spiritual food? How does this have any relation to what we just read in John chapter 4 and chapter 6? Well, here's the point. Christ's identity and purpose was one and the same because his heart was full of spiritual food. Let's take a look at that John chapter 4 passage. In this passage, we find Jesus at Jacob's well in the land of Samaria. Now, to most modern readers, this just looks like a normal interaction between two people of daily life. But opposite of what you may think, this was not a normal interaction. This interaction, my friends, is a perfect example of what happens when your identity and purpose collides. You see, Jesus and his disciples were not exactly supposed to be in that part of the nation. Jews and, and Samaritans, they, they didn't mix. They, they didn't like to mix. They didn't like each other. They didn't like to go around each other. And so there was a dilemma when Jews would travel from the lower region of Judea to the higher region of the nation called Galilee. They'd either have to travel around Samaria or travel through Samaria. Now this creates a dilemma in, an, in this certain passage because Jesus, early on in his ministry, he was baptizing people after John the Baptist was baptizing people. And the Jews got hold of it. These Pharisees, these uh, scribes and and all these uh, religious, prestigious people, they got hold that Jews, uh, Jesus was baptizing people. 
And so they wanted to kill him. And so Jesus had to get out of town. He had to get out of Dodge. And so the fastest way from Judea to Galilee was through Samaria. And on his journey, the scriptures say that Jesus and the disciples, they grew weary. So they stopped at Jacob's well to get them something to drink. Now during this time, it was midday, probably around 6 o'clock. And a woman was coming in to draw her water out of the well. And so Jesus started interacting with this Samaritan woman, asking her some questions, probing her. Jesus simply asked her, Could you draw me a drink of water that I may have to drink? And so while this interaction is taking place, Jesus' disciples run away to town to go get some food, some physical food. And they come back. And while this interaction is taking place, you see Jesus and this woman talking. They, they come up on this Jesus and this woman talking. And the scriptures say that Jesus came back and they marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said what do you seek, or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away to town and said to people, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. See, while the disciples were gone, Jesus spread the gospel message with this woman. This woman didn't know anything. She didn't know who Jesus was when he asked for a drink of water out of this well. And so Jesus had to share the gospel with this woman in such a way that we we do not uh, quite understand because Jesus was talking about himself. He revealed that he was the Messiah. And so when the disciples came back, they brought this bread along with them Thinking that Jesus was hungry, they offered him some bread. And they said, Rabbi, take and eat. Teacher, take and eat. Very simple words. Jesus said to them, I have food that you know nothing about. I have food that you know nothing about. My food is to to do the will of my Father, to do the will of Him who has sent me. I'm going to make this sermon really short and sweet for you this morning. A lot of us, a lot of Christians, We eat three meals a day, seven days a week. We have plenty to eat. But we are lacking a lot here. Jesus revealed to us in these two scriptures, John chapter 4 and chapter 6. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. My friends, there's an invisible food, and his name is Jesus. And unless we believe and trust in Jesus, we're going to keep living in this physical world, paying attention to physical things, working our nine-to-five jobs five days a week, making a paycheck, bringing it home, watching your favorite television program, You're going to live your 70, 80, 90 years, and you're going to pass away. And you're not going to leave a single mark of your Christian life here on this planet. God didn't design us to be like that. God designed us to eat invisible food. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the Lord Jesus Christ.
In fact, in John chapter 6, Jesus said to some of the Jews, some of the people following him, he said, if you don't eat of my flesh, if you don't eat of invisible bread, invisible food, he said, you have no life. In other words, we're walking dead. We're walking dead. My friends, I don't think any of us want to be walking dead Christians this morning. I don't think that's any of our goal. I think we need to refocus our minds and our hearts to what's important in this life. We need to refocus on Jesus Christ, on his life, on his body. Jesus revealed to us in the scriptures how we're supposed to receive this invisible food that we can't reach out and grab, that we can't see with our senses, find with our senses. He said, ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall be fine. Knock and the door will be open to you. He said, if your earthly father is good enough to give you a present, how much greater is your heavenly father to give you something that's worth incredibly abundantly more? My friends, all we have to do is ask God. Ask God for invisible food. Ask God to fill our hearts with Jesus. That our lives would forever be changed. Right about halfway between this auditorium, seven years ago, I was standing and I was praising Jesus. Kyle and his band was playing. It was a Dance for God event. And in that moment, I didn't know much about the Bible, much about the scriptures. I knew that God had saved me through Jesus Christ. I accepted that. While standing there praising, the Holy Spirit came upon me. And he called me to this ministry in this very place. In this very place. The Spirit of God is here. He's among us. The Spirit of Jesus is among us. And so simply this morning, as we enter our altar call, I want to welcome you to this altar. I prayed there seven years ago and accepted the call to the ministry that I am in now. I want to pray for you, over you, if you want to come and pray. But I want to pray over you that God Christ will impress upon your heart. The Holy Spirit will impress upon your heart that there's so much more to this life than what we can see or feel or touch with our physical senses. There's so much more to this life than that. In fact, this physical realm, this, this isn't really life. Life is the things that are unseen, unrevealed, unfelt. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you have given your only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My God, I ask that you would bestow invisible food 
among the hearts under the sound of my voice, O Lord. I ask, my God, that you would impress upon these hearts the need of the harvest, O Lord. The need, my God, that the harvest is ready if we would only go out and see. My Father, I ask, O Lord, that you would shroud us with your love, that you would bestow us your mercy, that you would forgive us in your grace. My Lord, help us, O God. Help us see things unseen, hear things unheard. My Father, I ask that you reveal things unrevealed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stand with us for our invocation in Jesus' name. Amen.
said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. 